Hey, this is James T. Khan, and we got another tutorial video here. And today we're going to be looking at ray casting. I'll try to keep this uh, quick and simple. Uh, if you're not familiar with what ray casting is, uh, there's a lot of different videos out there, a lot of different articles that talk about it. I won't spend a whole lot of time talking about the concept. Uh, I will kind of show you a visualization here. Um, but the main goal today is just to show you how to perform a ray cast with Bullet. Um, so first, just to really quickly explain what we're doing here with the Raycast. If I, uh, the way I have it set up right now is if I point and click somewhere on my screen, I'm going to cast a ray from the camera's position to a de predefined distance. So you can determine that distance. And right now I have it set to 100 in my game world. Uh, and when I print that, or when I, when I click that and shoot that Raycast, I've got some code to just draw that ray that I've shot. So what we can think of with this ray casting here is that I'm basically I'm shooting a line straight out in a direction from a from one position and then shooting it into a certain direction for whatever distance I want. I can choose that distance in my code. And uh, right now the ray cast is not hitting anything. So it's going to go the full distance that I have set, which is 100. However, uh, with a ray cast uh, in Bullet, you can cast that ray. So I can say, hey, starting at this position, shoot a line in this direction, and then tell me if you hit anything in the physics world. And so as you can imagine, uh, ray casting is uh, used pretty commonly for, for shooting weapons in a first-person shooter. Uh, generally, you'll shoot a ray maybe from the center of your screen, which aligns up with your crosshair. You'll shoot that ray straight in the in the direction that the player is facing, or that the gun is aimed, and then see if um, see if that hits anything. And if it does, well, then you know, hey, you hit your target. So in this case, what we're going to set up in this video is uh, a ray cast here, where uh, unlike a shooter where it's at the center of the screen, I'm actually making it a little more fancy, where it's actually going to go based on the mouse position. So wherever I click, a ray is going to shoot from the camera position. Uh, and then it's also going to um, detect if we've hit something. And if it's hit something, you'll notice that the ray is not going, is not being drawn the full distance. I'm only drawing the ray up until the point that it hits something instead. And so that's how we can find out, you know, one, we can figure out where the ray, at what point did the ray hit something. And we can also get a reference to what we hit and then push that object. So I'll also show you how to. In this video, we're going to kind of show you how to apply a force onto a dynamic object. And um, and that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and use the rigid body physics screen that we've already created. And I'm just going to add the ray casting functionality uh, to that same screen. No need to create another screen for this one. And um, so to get started here, let's head to our physics system. And I'm going to go ahead and create all the methods we need in here to perform our raycast first, and uh, then we will then we'll actually do the raycast from our screen. Now I'm going to just bring over some uh, code that we're going to need here. I'm going to create two new vector threes, um, a ray from. Basically, these vector threes are going to track the position of the last ray where it started and where it went to. And this ray color is just a vector three representing um, a purple. Uh, for the sake of drawing our ray for debugging purposes. And now if we head down, we're going to add a new method for uh, performing this ray cast. Um, so let's do that. Uh, we can do that right here under add body. And we'll just call it um, ray cast. And this method is going to take in a vector 3. We'll say from. A vector three two. So where is it? You know, where are we shooting it from? Where is it going to? And it's going to take in this object here called array result callback. And what we'll do is here, um, before we do anything, we'll set the last ray from uh, to that from that was passed in, so that we can render that later. And also, what I'm going to do is I want to subtract just a small amount on the vertical axis, the y-axis. And the reason I'm doing that is if I draw the ray in our debug mode, exactly from the pos the camera, uh, or the from the, the position of the camera, which is what it's gonna be in this case, um, you're not gonna be able to see the ray uh, because it's the, the, the line is so thin. 
So I'm just going to subtract a small amount. So it's kind of going to appear like it's coming from right below the camera. That's all. <clears throat> now we'll call the dynamics world. So that's our bullet, kind of our bullet wrapper class. And it has a method called ray test. So we pass in our from to in our callback. And now down here, we can check if the callback has a hit on it or not. And I'm also going to check because there's there's different um, array, result, array result callback uh, implementations here. We take a look. Uh, there's array result callback. There's um, closest. The common ones are uh, closest result callback. Here we go. Uh, closest not me array result callback. So that's a that's handy if you want to cast array and you want it to ignore a body. Then you can pat you can give that object a body and it'll ignore if it hits that body and keep going. You also have closest ray result callback. That's the one we're going to use today. And I think, you know, there's a few others. I think there's an all hits callback as well to get all the hits on that line. Um, somewhere up here, I'm sure we'll find it. If not, um, you can find it in the code, but it's called like all hits callback. Anyways, uh, so let's head back here. So we're just going to take in the kind of generic version of that callback. And we're going to check if this is a instance of a closest ray result callback. If it is, then I'm going to set the last ray to. So that's going to be we're going to what we're trying to do here is figure out the position in the world where the ray hit. We know it got a hit. Where did it hit? So that's what we're trying to figure out. So I'm going to set last ray to to from from the from position first. Then <clears throat> we're going to do some interpolation on this vector. So last ray two, we'll call lerp, which is our linear interpolation. And we're going to go from the uh, from two and then get this callback dot get closest hit fraction. And what we're trying to do here is so, right, we're going to set this vector three at the from position. We're going to interpolate it to the original position that we wanted the ray to go to by now that interpolation amount is going to be based on this get closest hit fraction. So this closest hit fraction is that in that value in between the from and to positions that the hit occurred. So we can interpolate that to get our hit point. Now there is on the callback object this get hit point world, um, which you're supposed to be able to just pass in the vector three from and it would populate the hit point. And for whatever reason, I sometimes this has worked for me, sometimes it has not. There's probably some ob obscure setting or way that it has to be set up. Otherwise, this will end up just returning a zero every time. And rather than fiddle with this because I just get tired of it, sometimes working, sometimes not, maybe one day I'll figure it out. <laughs> what I instead do is I do what Bullet does behind the scenes in the C++ code. And this is what they're doing. They're just doing an interpolation based on the from to the two hit point, and they're interpolating it based on this closest hit fraction value. Now, if we didn't have a hit, or if it just wasn't a closest ray result callback, we'll just set uh, the two position to the uh, two position that was passed in. So, and, and, you know, generally if we hit this line, that means you didn't hit anything, and it's gonna draw the ray from right from its start point all the way to the end point because nothing was hit in between. And uh, that's it for our raycast method here in the physics system. So now we can head over to the uh, to the screen that we're going to work on that rigid body physics uh, rigid body physics class here. And so in our in our actually we don't have a render loop here. Now we are inheriting from the base screen, which does have a render loop. So we're just going to override that so that we can um, add some logic above that uh, before we call the base screen render. And uh, let's see what that's going to look like here. Uh, we'll want to check a uh, poll for an input. And we'll say is button just pressed because we're going to do this based on um, a mouse button. And we'll just use the, the left button. Okay, so now we've got this. We need to perform our actual um, couple a couple things here we need to do to get that mouse position first we're going to need a callback object and we're going to use that one that we already saw 
we'll just say um was it closest ray result callback and we'll just instantiate that here and pass in two new vector threes uh, that's what it takes for its constructor um, we're also going to need two other uh, vector uh, vector threes that we're going to use over and over again I'm just going to bring them bring them in here um, ray from world and ray to world and you'll see what what we're doing with those in a minute uh, so if we go back down here we go so the first thing I want to do is every time we call this or every time we left click uh, we want to reset a couple things on the callback object because we are reusing the callback now you could instantiate a new ray result callback object every time um, in this case, I just reuse it because it's easy enough to reset it. And to reset the callback, we just um, set the closest hit fraction to 1. And then we also set the collision object to null. So if, if something was collided the last time, if there was a collision the last time that this callback was used, we're going to clear that out and we're going to just set the closest hit fraction back to 1. Uh, so now we're going to get a um, get a pick ray. And so the pick ray is going to be uh, basically the, what the pick ray is, is getting a ray of the mouse's position. So that's what that means if you hear that term. So get a pick ray of the of the current mouse coordinates, and we'll go ray ray because that's what the um, method is going to return. So on our on our perspective camera, we have this get pick ray method. It makes it really easy for us. And for the screen coordinates, you can pass in. Uh, we're just going to pass in the um, coordinates of the mouse position, which is uh, this GDX input dot get. That's going to give us the uh, screen coordinates of our mouse. So we'll do that. Uh, now we're going to set our ray from world and ray, uh, ray to world. And to set that, um, the ray from world is just going to be the origin of the ray, um, which is you know pretty much going to be the mouse position, um, the camera and mouse position. Now our, our Ray 2 world is going to be a little bit more involved, but not much. Uh, we are, we're going to set it to the Ray direction. Um, so that's where we're going to start is the Ray direction. And then we're going to scale it by whatever distance we want to cast this Ray. And in this case, I'm just going to scale it by 100. And then lastly, we have to now add the uh, origin point. Uh, because we we have a direction here, so first we set it to a direction, which is usually a, a normalized value, you know, between zero and one. So it's not going to it's not going to have a world position applied to it yet. It's just a direction. Then we're going to scale that direction by the distance we want to go. And now we have to actually add in the orig origin point as well. And that's how we're going to get this ray two world. So that's the point we want to shoot to. And then we'll call our bullet physics system. We'll call that new method, raycast. Pass in the ray from, ray to, in our callback object. And then after that, we can just check um, if, if callback has a hit. Um, let's see, yeah, if callback has a hit, we'll get that collision object from the, uh, from the callback. Let's see. There we go. Collision object equals callback, and it should have a get yep get collision object method on it. And now um, we'll check if the collision object is an instance of a rigid body. If so, uh, first we need to activate that collision object, because if you remember from the debug drawing video, uh, objects go to sleep after a certain time or when they're when they've slowed down to a certain threshold. And that's for performance reasons on the physics simulation. So if we're going to try to move this object, we're going to activate it first. We're just going to call activate to make sure that it's awake. And then we're going to do this. Um, uh, we're going to now we're going to actually apply a force on it. And this is how you move a dynamic object: is you don't actually uh, you don't actually tr touch its transform. Uh, instead, you you push it, and that's what we're going to do here. So let's see, apply central impulse is the one we want here. And so what way do we want to push it? So what we do here is we pass in kind of a direction or a, um, 
I don't know if we call it a direction or or an impulse, but um, I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to take the array that we used. We're going to take its direction because that's the way that the line is going. So it makes sense if we're going to kind of pretend like we're shooting here and, and, and we hit it. It should probably keep you should probably keep getting pushed in the direction that that ray was going. So we'll take the direction. We'll scale it by a certain amount. And the, the amount that you scale this by is going to be how powerful the push is. If you don't scale it at all, it's going to be like a little nudge. And if you scale it a lot, it's going to push it really far. So I think 50, you know, 50 is a good amount. We'll scale it by that. And then that's just going to cause it to be, just fly off into the, into the direction that the ray was already going. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's all we need here. So let's try to run this, see if I missed anything. Oh, you know what? I I did miss one thing. I just remembered um, in our rendering method here for rendering the debug world for the physics, we want to add a, um, a one change here to render that um, that ray just so, you know, it's easier if we can visualize it. So let's call debug drawer and it has a draw line method. And we have the last ray from last ray to in ray color. So now that'll draw the line for us every frame. Let's come over here and try to run it. I'm going to hit F1 to get us in the debug drawer. And let's try shooting a ray. There we go. I'm just clicking. Looks good. And you can see it kind of originates from just below the camera's position. Uh, now let's try to hit something here. There we go. So we can, we can hit these objects with the ray. It looks good. And lastly, we can check that the ray is not drawing beyond where it hit. And it's not. So that looks good. Um, yeah, that's it for the ray casting. Again, you you know, this would come in handy in a first person shooter um, where your bullets are basically a, you know, like an instantaneous speed. If you have, you know, bullets are so fast that if, you know, you can do a ray cast and say, did you hit it or not immediately? And that's for like a really quick kind of fast paced shooting game. Uh, you wouldn't want to use it generally for something like uh, if you're shooting like a rocket where it's a kind of slow moving object or slower moving object, you wouldn't usually use something like this. Um, but for like an instantaneous, I need to see what did I hit in this direction. Uh, ray casting is great for that. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'll go ahead and I'll push this code to the repository and I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.